What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Crazy Cycling Channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about painted on bike lanes and why they're often not particularly effective. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If I turn the camera around, you can see this road here has basically a uh, sort of wider shoulder here and that is meant for bikes. I think there's some symbols over there that say that that's a bike lane. And as we move into the intersection, you can see that there are some dotted lines there and it kind of leads the bikes sort of between the two lanes of traffic. There's a right turn lane where the cars are going right now. And then this is the bike lane. It kind of carries on that way in between the two lanes to go straight. And if you wanted to turn right, you would actually merge into the right turn lane and turn with cars. So this kind of thing is really common in the US. And I talk about this a lot in a lot of my videos that to me, this is basically not much more than a line painting exercise. I often find this to be something that, in my opinion, some bureaucrats, some politicians, some you know township board somewhere or um, you know city council, whatever, thinks up that they're going to put in bike infrastructure by just painting some lines on the road. Now, a lot of roads in the US are like this one, which is that they have kind of an extra wide shoulder to begin with. So basically, they don't, they don't need to change the roads at all. They just have to draw some, uh, paint some signs into that wider shoulder that uh, says that now this is a bike lane and that's designated it a bike lane and now magically the road has become safer. And if if the, there is no wide shoulder, they just have to widen the road a little bit, paint on that line and ta-da, there's bike infrastructure. Or is there? Well, in my opinion, this kind of thing does kind of work on a straight road, especially if it's um, not a particularly busy road. This actually is a fairly busy road, but um, I think this kind of thing does work here. You know, this this kind of a uh, painted on bike lane, what it really does is it gives you a little bit of space so that you don't get passed quite as closely um, by cars. What it doesn't do is provide any sort of physical barrier. So if the driver is distracted or whatever, or isn't paying attention, they can still creep into that bike lane and hit you from behind. And also, um, it disincentivizes drivers from moving out to the side. So what they'll do is they'll basically stay in their lane and that can give you a feeling of being passed quite closely when you're a bike. So I think this kind of thing does work, especially if the road is a little bit wider, it provides you a little bit of space, but it's not really that much more effective uh, than not having a bike lane. And in particular, what happens is that this kind of infrastructure is often incomplete. I have some videos about the bike infrastructure at MSU and when these bike lanes end, it can be quite dangerous because then you're suddenly merging into a lane of traffic and it's kind of the burden of the cyclist to check that there's no car coming from behind that's going to hit them. The cars aren't really paying attention because they're focused on driving. They don't often even know that the bike lane is ending and they'll just keep going straight. So it's kind of on the cyclist to turn around and you know that kind of puts you at risk of you know potholes and things that cyclists have to watch out for more than cars and also if there's a lot of traffic it can just be pretty dangerous because there just might not be a gap and it's especially dangerous when you have more than one lane in each direction if you have a four lane road it's really dangerous because the cars on that outside lane will not move over because they they have other cars blocking them oftentimes especially if it's a busy road and then they're just going to keep going barreling along and uh, as a bike, you kind of get squeezed. So that's the first problem uh, with painted bike lanes, in my opinion, when they're incomplete and you have to merge into a lane of cars. Um, and also the fact that they are just um, not necessarily that much more safe than not having a bike lane, just because all they really do is buy you a little bit of space. And the other place where I think this kind of infrastructure is really bad is at intersections. So we'll take a look at that here. This, uh, this is, um, by the way, this is in Okemos, Michigan, which is near Lansing, Michigan. And what we have here, again, is we have, let's see if I can move up a little bit, that bike lane, you know, carries on right there. And if you wanna go straight, you'd be in that bike lane. If you wanna turn right, you'd be in the right turn lane. But what happens is that you have to cross cars like this white one that just passed. You have to cross that lane of traffic. And once again, it's sort of on you to look behind you 
and make sure you're not going to get hit because the cars probably aren't going to stop for a bike they might not even see you and even if they're supposed to yield to you which they probably are i'm actually not sure about the law but you just don't know for sure because this infrastructure does not have safety built in you're not segregated especially at intersections so it's always on the cyclist to uh, make sure they're safe because you're the one crossing that lane of cars and you're much more vulnerable than the car is so bikes and pedestrians are the most vulnerable road users actually anything is more vulnerable than a car except maybe a semi truck um, but if the infrastructure doesn't protect those vulnerable road users it's kind of a poor design in my opinion this kind of infrastructure really should have inherent built-in safety either through an intersection which has protected bike lanes all the way around like a, a roundabout maybe you can have traffic calming you can have signaling specific to bicycles or traffic calming narrowing all kinds of things like that which increase the safety much more for bikes and pedestrians but this just assumes the cars aren't going to make a mistake that's one point and because you're vulnerable and because you have to cross lanes of traffic and because infrastructure is incomplete you have to constantly be on the lookout for what the traffic is doing there's some bikes coming i'm going to let them pass here okay i just figured i'd take a closer look at this intersection and talk again about how this is not complete infrastructure so if we take a look here once again you can see that bike lane there's a arrow pointing straight so again you've got to cross this lane here if you want to go straight and that's fine the road over there is actually not very busy there's no bike lane there but it's not a very busy road so that that i don't really have a problem with that but if you want to turn right you're going to be in this lane turn right and the road you turn onto actually has no bike infrastructure at all so you're just going to have to rejoin traffic on a very busy road which has two lanes in either direction um and there you i mean it's possible to bike on a road like that but it's it, it's pretty unsafe because on a four-lane road with no bike infrastructure the cars that come from behind in the outside lane closest to you they are going to tend not to want to merge especially if there's traffic to their left and because drivers are often impatient they're they're not going to want to slow down they're not going to be able to merge because they're blocked and so it's very very common to just literally get past with the car <laughs> right there next to you so you're cycling along at the side of the road the car is maybe it'll get over a little bit but it'll just stay in its lane and pass you sometimes within inches and on a busy road like that it's extremely common it's unsettling and dangerous so i i, I might cycle down that road late at night when there's no traffic but during the day i would never i would just cycle on the sidewalk which is not ideal uh, so that's a problem there same thing if you turn left so that car there is in the left turn lane and if you were a um that white car is if you were a bike you'd have to be there with that car and then you'd make your left turn as if you uh, were a car and then you're basically in traffic with with cars um and it, you can do it when there's no bike infrastructure you're supposed to cycle on the road so you're doing the correct thing by doing that but my argument is that the intersection is the most dangerous place for a cyclist so yes there's a bike lane on the straight stretch road yes it does improve safety somewhat but a straight road especially with two lanes one lane in each direction is not necessarily that dangerous to begin with i'm glad the road is a little bit wider there's a shoulder there's a space for you but if the intersection just treats you as if you're a car and the intersection is dangerous because you're going to be slower than a car you're turning across you know multiple lanes here cars might not see you there's so many things that could go wrong it's just once again a bit of a line painting exercise and and really far from ideal so i mean i would call this somewhere between a good start to uh pretty much useless um it's it it's kind of questionable to me whether or not this really improves safety especially this thing here where you have that bike lane that's kind of going straight um and i just think to really make biking more accessible you have to make the infrastructure inherently safe for bikes and much more inviting especially people who aren't confident you know like maybe a, a road cyclist or someone who's been cycling for many years feels okay in this kind of thing i've been cycling for many years i don't really feel comfortable in this kind of infrastructure 
and I can guarantee you a child or someone older or someone who's not cycled a lot is not going to want to use this. They're going to stay on the sidewalks, which has its own problems because you have driveways that you have to look out for. It's pretty common to get hit from people exiting their driveways. It's happened to family members of mine. Um, and also you have conflicts with pedestrians. So um, those are just some thoughts on this kind of painted on bike infrastructure. Not my favorite thing at all. Maybe a good start, but it, there's so much more that could and should be done. And there are so many societal benefits to increased cycling from increased health overall, you know, increased social aspects because you see people, you talk to them, you're not insulated in a vehicle. There's just so many reasons to promote cycling. Yes, it costs money, but studies have shown that the overall benefit, the, even the economic benefit of getting more people out on bikes is huge. So that's my spiel for the day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Take care and have a great rest of your day.